Hello and welcome to the Believe You Can Paint channel where we believe that everyone can paint if they just believe it enough to try. A bit of housekeeping to start off our inaugural episode. For the video format, I'll be showing all of the footage obtained during the painting process. The footage will be edited and sped up for the majority of the video to respect your time. Throughout the video, there will be music periodically. All music on the channel will be credited in the bottom center of the screen when the music begins playing and also in the description if you want to check the artist out. In the top right corner of the screen, you will see the brand and color of every paint I use on the channel, accompanied by the type of paint if that paint has one. Any other item I reference specifically will be called out in the top right corner as well for your reference. The episode's featured model and the game it belongs to will be referenced at the beginning of the video during the title screen and linked to when possible. Now, if you made it this far, you're probably asking, how much longer do you have to listen to me narrate? Well, the good news is I will not be filling 30 to 60 minute long videos with my voice. I will pop in periodically at specific moments that I believe are relevant to the painting journey that we're on for the episode. But we'll try to refrain from wasting too much of your time entertaining. And now that we have all that out of the way, let's get to the episode. Uh, as you have seen, we are in full swing on our paint job of the Dire Cthulhu Mini or Cthulhu, depending on which camp you're from. And that mini is from the Cthulhu Wars, Cthulhu Wars, from Peterson Games. Uh, we started off with the new Citadel Color branded Wraithbone Contrast Undercoat. Uh, these undercoats are essentially a primer, but they have a chemical that makes them shrink, giving them a very good single coat coverage and a smooth finish. Getting that finish and light coat is one of the key parts of using the new Citadel Contrast paints like we'll be using in this video. The Contrast Undercoat sprays come out fast and heavy and they are not cheap, so quick passes and well-placed sprays will help you save a buck and get you a good finish. The good part about these undercoats is there isn't much technique needed. It's just a spray paint, so shake it up, put it on light, and let it dry. Okay, so we've let our undercoat cure for about 12 hours and we're ready to paint. I want to stay away from advanced techniques here or any concepts of paint that may be a bit involved. So I'm going to try to put the thought process you should be having in your head for contrast paints in simple terms. Tabletop minis don't react to light the same way a full-sized object does. Shadows don't appear as they should, and light does not cast onto them as it should. So in order for a miniature to look right, we have to paint in the shadows, the really bright areas, and everything between. This problem is what contrast paints were designed to fix. As you can see, I'm taking my brush, filling it with paint right out of the pot, and brushing it in an upward motion on the model. This lets the contrast paint run off into the underneath of all the details in the model. I go in an upward motion so that when the paint moves to the model from my brush, it is already on the underneath of those details, depicting an overhead source of light like the sun or moon. The contrast paint's really unique and that is mixed to leave a little paint behind on the high spots of the model and then more and more as it runs off into the crevices. If I notice paint sticking on the high spot and not in a crevice, I'll simply use my brush to pull it off into the crevice. The contrast paint's really wet, so it's easy to push around whenever you first put it on. You wanna be sure to address any issues where the paint is sitting on the high spots immediately, because the longer it sits there, the more it will die and cause modeling or tidying, uh, which are two things that look unnatural. I promised I wouldn't narrate the whole time, and I intend to keep that promise, so I'm going to speed up the video while you guys listen to a good friend of mine, artist Terry Harriman, and a couple songs off of his album, In Light of Everything.
All right, so the gray zone, and we're at an important step right here uh, related to the contrast paints. I've uh, switched over to the Citadel base Wraithbone, so this is not a contrast paint, this is a base paint, and it's Wraithbone, which if you remember matches our undercoat. Uh, and what I'm doing is some of those tied modeling spots that we talked about when I left off last, uh, the, there was a few. Uh, so what I went, what I'm doing is going through. I'm touching up all the places where I bumped the white with my brush, and I'm touching up. Uh, you saw on his knee there, there was a spot that uh, didn't quite come out the way I wanted it. So I'm touching that up, and the purpose is, is I want to keep everything clean uh, that I'm not painting. So we've got the gray in. And uh, the reason I went with the gray, my wife and I were looking at some pictures on the internet and there was a really cool picture uh, from the Cthulhu Wars uh, art and he, uh, Cthulhu was gray and had yellow eyes, looked really, really cool. Um, so I wanted to go for that effect and I think we achieved it. Uh, I, there's a lot of, if you were going for a really high white light mini, um, I think this paint job would look really cool. Unfortunately for me, Cthulhu, it, it's hard for me to see him not green. Um, even in the one where he was gray, I just imagine he was green in low light. So it's hard for me to imagine him not green. And there's so many great greens in the in the contrast line that uh, I went ahead and switched over and started using uh, this green here. So this is the Militarum green, and it is an awesome color for green creatures. If you're doing reptiles, uh, uh, any kind of amphibians and you know Cthulhu I think it's just a really cool green color uh, so I decided to go with it and um, you know it the gray underneath is going to add a layer of shadow since the gray the it was a blue really is what it was it was a very blue gray and that blue is really dark and so with the green over the top of it that green is going to dye the high white spots. It's going to dye the medium gray spots and it's going to dye those dark spots all green. Now, it's hard to say if we would have got the same effect uh, with the Militarum green right over the white as I did with the gray. I think we probably would have been pretty close. It, there's obviously a slight difference, but I think we would have been close to the same effect. Um, yeah, on this one, I think we should pay close attention, if, if not use contrast paints, pay close attention to the area I'm painting right now, uh, right there on the chest, and you can really see contrast paints doing some good work. Uh, you know, again, I just slapped it on there, and I'm just, you know, I'm being a little ginger here because I didn't want to have to paint the tentacles 15 times uh, with white trying to keep them clean, so I am a little ginger there, but, you know, you can see I'm just putting it on. I'm not... There's no technique. The brush I'm using is a Hobby Lobby brush. So I think this is a really good example of what these paints can do for someone that's not using any kind of technique. And, and I try to keep with that theme throughout this video of not using a technique. You know, I'm just literally taking the paint, putting it on the model, trying to keep it from pulling up. Uh, I think most people could do that. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut out again, and uh, we'll put on some more music.
All right, so we've entered another important phase of the painting process. Here we're going back over with the wraith bone. I'm just getting the high spots, getting those really nice bright white color using a dry brushing technique, which we'll go over in another video. And if you need to know right now, there's plenty of other uh, contributors on YouTube that have posted how to dry brush. It's an important basic technique, uh, just not covering it in this video. So. Now that that is dried, we're going in with the Nasdrag Yellow. And this Nasdrag Yellow is a contrast paint. We're gonna use it like a glaze. Uh, glazes are used to dye paints, uh, usually two paints coming together. You can use a glaze over it to make them all blend together. Uh, glazes are being discontinued by Citadel, and that's because contrast paints are able to do the job of a glaze, as you can tell here. Uh, so we're just dyeing all this white to that Nasdrag Yellow. Uh, if you look close there, uh, all the deeper spots where the Nasdrag is pulling actually looks like a brown. That's because yellows are made up of uh, browns, or browns are made up of yellows, I guess is probably more appropriate to say. Um, so you can see it's just dyeing all that yellow there, giving it a nice bright tone where I dry brush lightly. Everything else where it was a little bit darker uh, has kind of a, a lighting effect where the light is over the top of Cthulhu's head. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go down the spine here, and you can see right there, yep, we're going in that upward motion again, making sure that the the paint is pooling in the in the crevices. And then I'm going to go ahead and continue on with the Nasdrag Yellow on all of his high spots, particularly his armor. Uh, I imagine that he's outside and in the sunlight, which I thought was pretty scary. The idea of Cthulhu being out in the sunlight, you know, not even cares about... He, he's so powerful at this point, he doesn't care about being seen. Uh, he, he's back to his full self. Um, so, uh, going through, we're hitting everything that the sunlight would touch. You'll notice I skip a little bit of the tail here, so that because uh, that wing is there. And, uh, you know, I'm. Th there's an important part of this right here that you can see. As you notice, I started low on the tail, out in front. I imagine the sun shining right on it. And I didn't go back for more paint. I am dragging that paint along. And you might have noticed throughout the video I do that. Um, and there's an important thing that happens when you do that. When you go with fresh paint, it's going to be dark. You've got the most paint. It's going to be the most paint on the model as soon as you touch it. And then as you drag that paint out, usually in an upward motion for me, as you drag that paint out, it becomes thinner and thinner. And so you get this light to dark transition from where you started to where you ended. So if you continue with that upward motion uh, that I've been referencing, you do that upward motion, you get your darks underneath in all the crevices where they should be, you know, your shadows. And then you also are slowly running out of paint as you reach the top of the model. And so the closer you get to the top of the model, the less obstruction there is, so the more light there would be. So ideally, by the time you get to the top, there's light shining directly on some spots and then light m still penetrating to other spots and then in the dark parts of the model maybe like cthulhu's waist area there's not a lot of light reaching it so that's the that's the theory behind it but what's really cool about contrast paint is you don't have to think about all that all you have to think about is put the paint on the model in an upward motion starting from the bottom up and you'll get that effect on accident uh, here I've come in with the Blood Angels Red, and I'm doing some detail work on these uh, these uh, nodules on his back. Uh, I also, uh, it, it, the file was corrupted, but there was uh, some purple paint going on the tentacles there. That was, uh, let me grab it here. That was the shyish purple was that color. And then over the top of it, I did a volupus pink. That shyest purple was awfully deep, and purples are kind of tricky to paint with, um, especially dark purples. So I wanted to go back over it with the pink to kind of dye the high spots. And it, it looks okay, but you oftentimes, the purples come awfully close to black when you're doing the dark purples. Uh, now we've transitioned to Creed camo, and we're doing the wings finally. And you'll see again, uh, trying to stick with that upward motion. Now you will see I did a downward motion uh, at the top part of the wing and that's because I didn't want a lot of paint up there at all those got to be the brightest parts of his body I imagined and so I went with the downward motion so that I was pushing all the paint out of that area and then I transitioned and started doing the upward motion in the lower areas because I wanted it to still have that painted effect 
Uh, but since I started at the top of the wing, I had to push the paint down. Probably if I would have started at the bottom of the wing and worked my way up, by the time I would have got up there, I'd have been, I would have used enough paint that I would have had the same effect without having to push the paint around as much. Uh, you can also see I'm um, hitting all those, the, the tops, the bony parts of his wings really good and uh, running the paintbrush back over it. And that's because I got some of that tidying and modeling when I put it on, on the first pass. And so I just kind of pushed it off of there as I went up. Now switching over to the other wing, uh, we're going to do the same thing and uh, just make sure we get the, the creases of his wings the heaviest. You'll see right there I'm working in. And then the, you know, try to go a little bit lighter using that running out of paint technique uh, up onto the higher spots. So there's quite a bit of detail that I put into the wings. One of the one of the things that I try to stick with is I try to go for a simple overall paint job, and then I look for something that I can really accent so that it draws your eye. Because really what if a mini has one really great, great feature and everything else looks appropriate, you can come out with a pretty good paint job. I thought for this mini, I thought the uh, yellow head, the, you know, the Nasdrag yellow, I thought that was going to be it. And I think it probably is. Um, but he's so big that when you turn him around to the back, his, uh, his yellow is really cool looking but when you turn him around to the back it's just not as definitive and so uh, i wanted to look for some more features to put on those wings and we'll see those here in a little bit uh, now i'm going in with warp lighting this is the neon green of the contrast colors uh, and it can do some wild things it's really cool for like ghost ghostly green ghostly effects uh, if you do it and then dry brush white over it it gives kind of a wispy green glow color uh, what I'm using it for here is uh, like a glaze, and I'm hitting all those little nodules and ridges he's got on his uh, armor. And it's hard to tell because the video is fast here, but I'm actually dotting each one of those individual bumps. And there you can see a good bump, 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 bump. So I'm going through bumping all these with this green. Now that's the same green that you can see on his face, and that was another uh, piece of footage that didn't get captured, unfortunately. But uh, you can see I've got that green on his face also. And I thought that would really break up the Nasdrag yellow some. Um, and I kind of got wild with this warp lighting because I love the color. Uh, it, it's actually kind of cartoony for the rest of the fig. Um, but... I, I thought it looked really neat, and I imagined uh, one of the things that that uh, you'll see in squids and octopus and uh, other uh, similar deep sea creatures is a lot of time they'll have these really wild features on pieces of their body, and they have different purposes, you know, defense mechanism or uh, to scare predators uh, usually is, I think, the common one, but there's also to distract prey so that they're looking at one thing. Uh, one part of the body and not paying attention to another there's also camouflage i think but i just imagined you know that cthulhu might have something like that uh he might have a, a feature that looks entirely out of place with the rest of his body and uh so i i went for that i thought that was kind of a neat idea that he might uh he might have a feature like that so and as you see, I, later on in the process, I'll bring it together really well here. Uh, so going back over to the wraith bone now, uh, this is, uh, I'm dry brushing all the ridges through the wings, and that's because I'm going to come back and I'm going to glaze those. And so I want to make sure that I've got a good base to glaze them. Uh, I felt like the high spots were not distinguished enough from the rest of the wings. So you can see... I'm just doing that dry brushing, very, very little paint on my brush, whipping it around. It's catching all the high spots and the paint's sticking. And we'll just keep doing that. Switch over to the other wing, get it done also. Really easy technique and it, it's great effect. Dry brushing's been covered heavily uh, throughout the YouTube verse, so I'm sure that, I don't even know that I could do 
a dry brushing video justice, but we will cover it just, you know, so it's available on this channel. So the dry brushing's dry and we're moving in with Plague Bearer Flesh. This is a contrast paint. And uh, you can see I'm just slapping it on there. And the reason I'm slapping it on there is because I'm using it like a glaze. So I want it to dye the white to the most true version of that color, which is kind of a putrid green. Uh, and then there we can see it really good, putrid green. And then I wanted uh, that that paint to lay onto the wings. So onto the parts that were not white, onto the green parts. I wanted it to lay onto there. And what will happen is, is it will slightly dye that to that lighter green. And it will make it look like his skin has stretched over those bones um, in his wings. So it should... Uh, you know, it, it did. It, it gave it that effect where it looked like his wings had grown across there. So uh, now we're hitting the Blood Angels red a little bit more. There's my daughter, beautiful little Urza Sky. Um, we're using the Blood Angels red just to clean up those nodules a little bit more. Here you can see I grabbed a uh, I grabbed a brush to wipe off some extra contrast paint. If you're fast enough, you can do that. So I just grabbed a brush with no paint on it. This model gave me tantrums with the eyeballs because they're so small in relation to the body and so I actually had to get on the internet to figure out where his eyes are supposed to be. Uh, so I did a little red underneath it and then went ahead and painted the eyes just coal black or Avedon black actually it was the paint and that's from the airline that was not a that was not a contrast paint. So he's done I've moved into the base. Usually for the base, I'll use almost all my Cthulhu Wars minis are actually with this P3 Crixbane highlight. Uh, it's a paint that came in the Retribution of Scrya uh, pack for uh, War Machine. And uh, it's a good, thick, heavy paint. P3s, they're very, very heavy paints usually. They don't have a full line uh, for... Uh, uh, they don't have the range that Citadel has where they have a special paint for each scenario. Uh, but P3 does have some really, really nice paints. And uh, their their base paint equivalent, which is the Formula P3, it's really great for this here. And uh, all of my Cthulhu War minis have bases in this color. And then I'll use uh, various washes to dye those differently and probably now contrast paints uh, uh, once I can find a good use for that so uh, I'll uh, let the basing go here and we'll cut to another song and then I'll come back for the wrap up
Okay, you've made it this far. We're reaching the last leg here. Uh, I'm going in with some Rin Flesh from P3, um, and it is a flesh tone. And I just did the insides of those uh, holes in his wing. And then right back with another P3 paint. This is Moro White, and I'm just using it on the on these uh, little polyps he's got all over his wings. Uh, and it, there's a mess up. You can just wipe it off. Got to be fast, but it works. Uh, special shout out to that brush right there. I'm using the Psycho uh, from Army Painter, and it is pretty awesome. Small brush, and it, it's really great. Uh, maybe notice my hand bracing that I'm using there. I've got my arm on the table, both of them. I'm holding my hand, using the using the table to brace everything. This detail work is where a lot of people have trouble and honestly I'm just poking just poke poke the paint onto the model use a lot of bracing make sure you poke the right spot I've got bad eyes uh, you're actually watching from the point of view of my magnifying glass um, but it, usually I'll use a magnifying glass too now we've switched over this is a Vallejo game air light livery green and I'm just using some different paints these this all this work could be done with contrast except maybe the white um, how I put that on, but I, I put that I put that white on just because uh, that's the one I use to usually glaze. Uh, so this Vallejo Game Air, it's really really thin. It's meant for an airbrush, um, but it's super thin, and especially the lighter colors. And so what I'm doing is I'm just dyeing those white dots. I'm dyeing them to that green. And the reason why we have to do the white then the green is one to get that glow effect that we talked about earlier, but also the the Vallejo is so thin, the air is so thin, that it would probably take 20 coats to get the effect we got in one pass right here. So I'm all about cutting the corners. Um, you know, there's pro painters that will tell you the right way to do it, and there, there surely is a righter way than what I'm doing. But when you're playing with amateurs, you're an amateur, you're not looking for a pro paint job, I think the effect is perfectly fine. Uh, so using that, uh, using that Vallejo game air just to dye, dye some of that, uh, face work, make just a little bit lighter, do some sun effects on there and then switch it back to the Crixbane. We're going to do a little bit of touch up work, uh, throughout. And this is just, uh, I had to wait on the toes to dry where we did that, uh, that bone color, uh, the skeleton horde contrast. I did that on the nails and and to give them claws and so I had to wait for that to dry before I could touch up the rest around uh, the those areas and now we're we're kinda going with the old school version of what contrast paints can do now um, this is my tried and true method for doing the bases on Cthulhu Wars and I'll probably continue with this so we'll do the P3 base like we showed earlier followed up by a new one oil shade and these are washes you probably heard them washes uh, they're also referred to as inks, although inks, washes, and shades sometimes are different things. Sometimes they're not, depending on which conversation you're in. Uh, so for the purpose of this, this conversation, we'll call it a wash, even though it's officially branded as a shade. Uh, so what we're doing is, is we're just putting dark spots in all the little nooks and crannies of the rocks. And we're also letting it lay on the flat surfaces too. Um, uh, Cthulhu Wars minis are really good about having detail where it doesn't look like there's details. So you can see this wash is really wet and it's working kind of like a contrast paint does and it's pooling up on flat surfaces. And that's because this model actually has some texture there. Uh, on top of that, I also let it model and, and uh, uh, tide some because rocks aren't perfect. They're imperfect, you know, and so we want to get that imperfect look. And I do that knowing that this step's coming. So now we switch to the Formula P3 uh, Moro White. And I'm dry brushing again. And uh, important note about what I'm doing right here. That brush that I'm using is a makeup brush. That's from Amazon. I got 32 of them for $8. And they are awesome. I bought them because there was a couple brushes in there that I wanted to get so that I could try using some chalks and some pastels uh, on models. 
uh, which we might look at. Uh, I have yet to experiment with them, so I might video that and we can see what happens. Uh, but that's why I bought those brushes because I thought they'd take a beating. Uh, and they actually turn out to be really good dry brushes. Uh, they're nylon, so they don't hold paint in them. Uh, so they last a good long bit for dry brushing. And they're great for doing terrain and, and bases. Okay, so now we're switching over to the Quick Shine. This is Quick Shine Floor Finish. It's just your standard hardware store floor finish that you would put on your hardwood floors. And I use it to seal the model. Uh, there are a lot of good seals out there. Vallejo Mat is one of my favorite. Uh, but for Cthulhu Wars partic in particular, I use the floor varnish. Um, I don't mind the glossy look. A lot of the a lot of the figures would be glossy anyway, and it is the cheapest way to do a really hardy finish. And so that's that's my preference. These figures get played with a lot. They're not for display, and so I'm going cheap and easy. Uh, it does take an airbrush to spray it on, but you can brush it on also. You just have to be, you know, generous with it when you put it on. And this is our final product. I think he came out all right. He could have been better. There was some experimenting, but I'm pretty happy. Thank you for watching. And remember, believe you can paint and try it. You'll be surprised what can happen.